the research that we published in the journal Science is the first time that we have chemical evidence for animal pigments in the fossil record. And these pigments are over 120 million years old. And we can spatially map not only a biomarker that is distinct for this pigment, in this case, copper, but we can also map the relationship of organic compounds which link to the copper. So it gives us incredible insight to these animals. And this insight expands to some of the most beautiful fossils that we've had the pleasure of working on, including Confucius Ornus Sanctus. This is the first species of beaked bird ever to live on the earth. So every animal with a beak flapping around in the skies today is related to this animal. We were able to make this discovery by putting together an international team of researchers led by the University of Manchester, but critical in the collaboration was input from scientists at the Stanford Synchrotron Radiation Light Source. We were able to harness state-of-the-art X-ray technology in order to resolve trace metals as biomarkers in the fossil record. There were three key results of the study. The first result was that trace metals are strongly correlated with feather material, as well as other soft tissues in a range of organisms that we studied. The second finding was that by analyzing the sedimentary matrix that the fossils were embedded within, we were able to show that these trace metals are not geochemical additives. They're original to the fossils. And the third, and probably most exciting result, is that the coordination chemistry of these trace metals is organic. They're organically bound materials, and in fact, the coordination chemistry in the fossils is exactly the same as the coordination chemistry of trace metals found in pigments sampled from modern living organisms. This is a beautifully preserved fossil. Uh, but what is interesting, what you're seeing now doesn't tell you what it actually looked like. Without the results from the synchrotron, it would be impossible to diagnose where the concentrations of pigment were. And that's what we can see mapping copper. And it's concentrated in areas in the body, the neck, where we know it would be dark because the copper correlates with pigment. And then when we get to the feathers, we can look at the distribution of the pigment in the feathers, not by the fossil, only by our results. So if you don't read this paper, you really do not understand what this fossil would have looked like in life. These results give us hope that by being able to resolve this pigment, we will be able to resolve chemical signals of other pigments in the rock record. The other thing I think we need to point out is that this is an important improvement on previous research, which has relied solely on structural techniques. In fact, we've been able to resolve pigment in cases even where the structural details have been completely reacted away. We see an amazing relationship between the preservation and the ability to resolve biosynthetic pathways in extinct animals. This is completely changing the way we view fossils and the whole field of paleontology. Being able to use metals as biomarkers is a powerful tool for use not only in paleontology, but also in geology. Not only can we use it to work out the details of exceptional preservation, but in fact, we can use it to tease out the role that certain metals played throughout the evolution of life.